Thomas Holmes, while Christ Jesus is the master. And when Christ is the master, we will obey his word. When we obey his word, it will be manifest in the way we interact one with another. The way we care and love one another. When the spirit of God is in us, it's not going to be hard for us to forgive one another. The peace of God will reign in our homes. And all these antics going on in the world will not have their way in us. So let, let, make this time count that as you have come, that God will instruct you. And what you hear this morning will not just be another teaching, but it will be something that will make you a better mother, a better father, a better sister, a better son, a better child, that the peace of God will reign in us and will not just tolerate ourselves. We will enjoy each other's company and the glory of God will be evident in our families in Jesus' name. Our Father, we want to thank you so much for your word. Entrance of thy word giveth light, it giveth understanding. And we are asking this morning as we study your word, we will have fresh, peculiar understanding in Jesus' name. And that which we learn will be etched on our hearts that the things of this world, the pressures of life, the circumstances of life, will not erase them in Jesus' name. We will be shining light to the world. And our lives will glorify your Son. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Who can share with us quickly what you or she learned from the study of last week? Just quickly, anybody. The study of last week. What did you learn from the study of last week? I deliberately asked to challenge us. What did you learn from the study of last week? Yes, ma'am. Mama, I'll do you there. There are 22 of them. Which one particularly you really, really you know, struck you? This is what is very vital for me. Amen. God bless you. You see, what you think about consumes you. As far as my sister is concerned, nothing else matters in this world. All I care for, one day, one day, Jesus shall appear. And I pray God will challenge us to live as Christians waiting for his coming in Jesus' name. This morning we'll be studying the practical love and forgiveness in the family. Practical love and forgiveness in the family. Because it's not in our outline, so we may not have had the benefit of studying it or memorizing the memory verse. Our text will be taken from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 8. But our memory verse, which is very easy, which many of us might even know, we, 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 is from John. The Gospel according to St. John, chapter 13, Verse 35, I will read for us. We'll read it a few times. If we didn't know it before, it should be part of us in Jesus' name. Gospel according to John chapter 13, verse 35. Are we there? I will read. And I want us, in fact, I want us to read it together. The gospel according to St. John chapter 13, verse 35. We read at the count of four. Three, four. Can we read again? One more time. And who can recite it for us without looking at the Bible? Anybody? Yes, ma'am. God bless you. This morning, I saw the all. The all was not in my mind. If you ask me to recite it, I won't put the all. But God is opening my eyes to the all. All men, whether they are believers or not, all men shall know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another. And I pray the Lord will really make this scripture very, very strong in our hearts in Jesus' name. And our text is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 8. I want a quick reader to please read for us. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 8. Anybody? Yeah. 
Yes, sir. I want to save time. I was to read the whole thing, but so much for us to tell you this morning. Charity suffered long and is kind. Charity envied not. Charity vaunted not itself and is not puffed up. Verse 5, not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Verse 6, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. 7, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Verse 8, charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Verse 9, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part. 10, but when... That which is perfect is come. Then that which is in part shall be done away. 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. 12. For now we see through a glass, darkly. But then face to face. Now I know in part. But then shall I know, even as also I am known. Verse 13. And now abide that faith, hope, charity. This tree, but the greatest of these is charity. And charity, often in that scripture, is often de described in the more modern language as law. Who is there anybody here that has not heard the script that scripture before? Anybody? Just raise up your hand. Uh, whether in this church, in one of our teachings, anyhow. I, I brought that up because we have said that over and over again. But it seems love is something we find very hard to tackle in a practical manner as a church. And that's why the topic this one is practical love and forgiveness in the family. We know all this, but people, some people leave the church. They say there's no love in the church. They say they don't love me, so I'm going to find another church where they show love. Love to them is maybe pastor gives you stuff, maybe they help you to pay your bills, pay your rent. That's where they show love. And we fail to understand the essential components of love in the family. And we see that the devil is deceiving so many. You see spouses, they will say, even in the church here, they will say, my husband doesn't love me. They will say, my wife doesn't love me. Their children will say, my parents don't love me. But we know this scripture, we can describe it. We often, without, without making an effort, recite that scripture ourselves. Love is this, love is this, love is that. And if that was the case, why is there seems to be a deficiency of practical love in our heart? This morning, I want you to forget all the matter I've known before and say, let's look at this topic practically. In the very same, look, how does it apply to me? I am a wife. I am a husband. I am a child. I am a boy. I am a girl. I'm supposed to be a member of a family. How do I show love that members of my family would know that I love them? And the Lord will open our eyes in Jesus' name. You say, we don't just have to be complaining there's no love. But the challenge is on us to say, okay, yeah, this, my wife says I don't love her. What do I do for her to know that I love her? That's often the problem. Because many of us, we love our spouses, we love our children, but there seems to be so much, maybe doubt or, or, or strife. When there's strife, you cannot say there's love. And the practical love is what we're targeting this morning. And I believe, I'm praying earnestly in my heart. And all that I said here, God will open our eyes. Because love and forgiveness are very powerful. You can't love a somebody you cannot forgive. And our faith as Christians is preeminent, is, 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 pre, pre, uh, pre, is premised on love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's premised on forgiveness. He said, all his sins and iniquities, I will remember no more. And why is it now, as members in the family, it's so hard for us to forgive? And let's turn the Bible to the book of Mark, chapter, chapter 13, at 11. I will read for us verses 25 and 26. When ye stand praying, forgive if ye have ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. When I was sharing with Pastor Charles a few weeks ago, there was a, there was a situation where they had to go visit a sister. Maybe the husband left her, and she was going through some, some challenging uh, sickness. And they were saying, we will pray for you. Can we just guide you to so that we want to be sure that you are ready to receive uh, answers to this prayer. Do you have anything against anybody? Nobody will expect that. A woman whose husband left her, that would be a lot of pain. And she said, oh, this man, I, I will never forgive her, forgive him. And they, they, they preach to her again. She started to say, oh no, I would never forgive him. I can understand. 
Maybe the husband must have hurt her big time. We can also relate. But as Christians, we will see through the study of this morning that forgiveness is just a paramount aspect of our Christian life. If you come to a stable, all you can say, you cannot forgive anybody. I'm sorry. I'm not, I don't think you are born again. Because you are forgiven to receive Christ. And if Christ could forgive you, and if God could send his only begotten son to die for you, then I don't know what is the sin or offense from anybody that you cannot for forgive. I would like to clarify a few things. What is a family? Sociologists describe the family as a so the, the smallest social unit consisting of adults who have to raise children. But unfortunately, our world is beginning to, to destroy, to malign. America today is not, it's not family friendly. They say somebody, you see two men, they will go and they will pay a woman, they will, will give you this semen, we're going to inseminate you, you have a child, don't worry, when the child comes out of your body, don't forget about the child, we own the child. You see two men, they say, this is the mommy, this is the daddy, come on, both of you are daddies, where did that come from? Those children, they, God will open their eyes very soon. And you see some women, maybe a have past age right now, <laughs> I got to help myself, <laughs> I got to find somebody, you know, whatever, whatever, we we'll make a baby, it's my child. No, those are not the kind of families we're talking about. We are people of God, our family is premise upon the word of God. For this student shall the man leave his father and his mother <laughs> and cling to his wife. <laughs> And they shall be one flesh, and they shall be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Let's have that understanding. We will teach us, we will not condone that. Let them begin to know that from now. A family is a man and a woman who marry properly. No, who just go find a man somewhere where well, I got this house, so, eh, you, can be, you can be my man, whatever, whatever, whatever. No, 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 no. That's what, what, what we're talking about here. A family is as instituted by God. And we shall establish that no matter what the government says, no matter what the law says, they can call us big gods and whatever, we will stand upon the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to look at a uh, few questions uh, 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 to, to guide our understanding. In what areas is the family, or a family in the church under attack today? Anybody? In what areas is the family under attack in America today? Yes, ma'am. And divorce. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Unforgiveness. Anybody else? See, I want this story to be practical. So that you know what you are. Yes, ma'am. Disunity. What causes disunity? Lack of love. Lack of love. We're going to get there. You see, selfishness. Selfishness. When it's smart. And self manifests itself in so many practical ways. And see, that's so funny now. It's tax season. They will say, two people, they live in the same house. They want to deceive them. You will get more money. As far as IRS is concerned, you are divorced. Okay? We are not divorced, but you are divorced. So we we'll file separately. You file separately. They call them you call head of household. Head of household. They lie. The laws encourage the, 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 the undermining the family structure. All the, all the tricks of the devil. The Lord will open our eyes in Jesus' name. We're going to look at three points this morning. Forgiveness that corrects and erases all faults. Forgiveness that corrects and erases all faults. Let's be real. Offenses will come. Somebody will hurt you. Somebody will do things that will pay you. But offenses, forgiveness that correct and erases all faults. Question. In what ways do we offend each other in the family? If you are not married, you cannot answer this question. So if, in what ways do we offend one another in the family? Anybody? If you ask me, I will answer you very easily. Because I've been offended by my spouse or by my kids before. But I want us to share this knowledge. So that we know how the devil will put little things here and there. Yes, my sister Mokwilola. Did I see you up your hand? And nobody will know I'm afraid of my. In what ways do we offend each other in the family? Eh? Yeah? A lies. 
but we are Christians now. We shouldn't be lying. So I don't want to. I don't want to take that. You might be correct, but I don't. That's a singing. You deliberately inflict pain on somebody by lying. Yes, ma. And so little, little things that we do that misunderstanding that, each other. How? I mean, you can see something one way and your spouse see it the other way, and it causes confusion. What well, offense now? Not confusion. In what ways do we offend each other in the family? Offend things that that cause pain. Yes, oh, you have been married several decades. Baba Wajiku, you have a lot to say. Did not, how do we deny love? <laughs> yeah, why? Yeah. There are so many ways. Oh, tell us. This is practical. The topic today is practical love and forgiveness in the family. In what ways does my. my okay, let's that's, that's not personalize it. Just make it general. In what ways do we offend each other in the family? In the morning, one can wake up, just refuse to say good morning to another one. You see, some things we take for granted. If my wife doesn't greet me good morning, I don't care. But to him, it's important. Let's see that. Mama Udochi. When uh, one person or the other fails to give due respect, to the superior person. How? Re respect is reciprocal. How? 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 Let's be practical. <laughs> Just you as uh, daddy said, you yes, may sir. wake up and decide not to greet your husband. Or the husband may decide not to greet the wife. The malice is there. They carry their faces maybe for one reason or the other. Unresolved issue, which is between two of them. They fail to greet or flow together that day. That's the offense. That's good. But it's not really offense. I'm looking for offense. Something that you do. Offense is something you do to, to hurt me. But I didn't hear me. I'm waiting for you, sir. We might, we might take a few minutes after uh, today. Not being helpful to each other. Not being helpful. You see, I will talk for women today. Some things I didn't know. Why not you speak? I'm an African man. I patterned myself after my dad. If you know me very well, if you inside with me for one or two days, you will hear something about my dad from me. I, all I wanted to be was to be like my father. It was my model. But my father cook, I don't remember. My father make the bed. You know, I've told you guys this. I don't remember. For me now, I get off the bed. You don't make it. That's why I come in there in the evening. You, you, I'm there before you. You say I should get. I will get up for you to make the bed. I'll come back inside. But are you blind? Did you see this bed before you got in there? Couldn't you have made that bed before I came in? It's so, it's not sinful, but it's offense. Like my mother said, you see this. Maybe the woman work night shift. All night she been working. You are off the following day. And she saw the way the whole bathroom was, everything was kind of messed up. And she come, she's just closing her eyes that this man, is he blind? Can't you see this toilet the way he is? Couldn't he have helped me? But because she's an African woman, she didn't want to confront the man. And she just kept going and suck it up. Offense in the family. And this thing, uh, sometimes it goes to outright offense that is sinful. We don't want to go, we don't have time to go there this morning. But we're, we're, I'm assuming that we all are believers, we love the Lord, we want to do the will of the Lord. Sin is out of the way. But sub to sub to, oh, God bless you. you, want to say something? Okay. Lord, Hallelujah. Another thing that causes offense in the family is lack of appreciation between both spouse. Not appreciating one another no matter how little the effort is. God bless you. Baba Amara. He's an old man. So let's listen to him very well. If you do the spouse, yeah. that's, that's a big one. We have kids in the class, so we're not going to talk too much about that. But we know what we're talking about. I'm tired. I have headache and this and that. And this and that kind of stuff. Yes, it creates offense. This woman knows I cannot go somewhere else. Why she doing this to me? The Lord will help somebody else. It seems I'm waking people up. Yes, ma yes, sir. I discovered that we have been beaten about the periphery of this question. Amen. We need to come to reality. Amen. You see, financially, we offend ourselves because at times my wife will say, I'm the one who bought this. I'm the one who has this. I will say also, I'm the one who paid for this. I'm the one who did this. 
So all these kind of things at times bring a kind of uh, uh, confusion. And uh, you talk about greeting one another also is beating about the peripheral of the question. You see, at times, sexual intercourse brings problems. Uh, uh, we have little kids in the class today. Uh, we don't want to go and there. This all we, these we don't want to go things. like that. Okay. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's one of the questions. God, God bless. Also, I, I get you. Let me, let me paraphrase it. Also, I get in you terms now. of food, yeah. food stuff, yeah. getting food stuff and getting uh, feeding one another, this I bought, this you bought, this you did not buy, this I will not buy. Also, these are things that we, we, we need to be realistic. Amen. It's not that we, do, we should be painting it. Amen. God bless you, my brother. We really appreciate. We want our families to be lively. I must say this about myself. How many of you know my wife here? Most of us don't know my wife. I'm married. I have a wife, and I have kids. And my wife left me. I live by myself. What the the person I am today is not who I was 15 years ago. I'm a different person. There was one day, I used to work Saturday. I, I'm, I'm just, I didn't plan to say this. I don't want to expose my, but we should learn because we are getting practical. On Saturdays, I used to work from 4 a.m. to whenever on my on that job. Very demanding job. Saturdays only. 4 a.m., I, I don't know when I will leave. I was coming from work. She called me. I remember where I was, exit 75 or 920. I picked up the phone. As you are coming, and you may have to stop by McDonald's and get you something to eat. Said, How dare you? I mean, gone all day. You're telling me to branch at McDonald's? What are you doing at home? I left you at home? I was really mad. I got home, you can imagine, my eyes was in the sky. Something I didn't know then. Sometimes women are tired. Sometimes they're not in the mood to cook. African cooking is painstaking. Sometimes they didn't have, maybe they tried to cook that soup in the morning, they couldn't get, get to it. What do you do? He can't give you beans to eat or rice with nothing. The understanding, we're going to get there. And when I was preparing this study, it's something I felt I could prepare in series. So that all these little, little things that are kind of affecting us in the family, we bring them out. Like my brother was trying to say, in the night, you face this side, I face this side. You wake up this morning, in the morning, come on, you're going to get no greeting. It's not gonna, it doesn't happen that way. But so, can, can we address that? Yes, we can. Understand it is it. Selfishness is not part of it. But when you think for that person, say defraud, deny ye not one another. Don't defraud, sorry, defraud what you think for feel for this woman. I feel for you. Then the grace of God will help us do that, even that which is not convenient. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. You see, unforgiveness, see, I didn't have time, but I, I want to move very fast. See, if you don't forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father in heaven not forgive you. Once we understand that, we are always on the lookout for anything that will cause offense, that will, that will breed offense, that will create hurt between you and your spouse, between children. We say, we didn't talk much about the children. Children too get offended, but we don't understand. He said, no, my, my, parents don't, my parents don't love me. But this, they, are, they are struggling. They are, I came to America because of my children. I didn't have to. By the grace of God, I was doing very well in Africa. But somebody told me, Carl, you are just being selfish. If you go to America, your children will do better. I forgot about And that, for that child to come and tell me now, you don't love me. Come on, how else would I have loved you? I gave up so much for you. But sorry, that's the concern of that person. That's a saying in my language. The th you talk more about the things that hurt you. You don't care about somebody else. As far as that child is concerned, she has need. She has pain that is unaddressed. And it will be causing strife and uh, bitterness in the family. And what does strife do? It creates conflict. Before you know it, that will be bitterness. If bitterness does not build up suddenly. It starts little by little. Little offense. Little offense. You did this yesterday. That's what you did last week. You did it last month. Before you know it, that woman is mad at you all the time she doesn't want to cook for you anymore it's like cooking is a pain it doesn't deserve it i cook and cook what, I, what do i get because you have allowed it to build and build and build and build and be until bitterness begins to come in and when bitterness comes in it hinders progress you can't work together anymore bitterness comes in there's heal health I mean, when you are bitter, you, 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 your blood pressure is going to be sky high because there's pain that, that you have built up in you. You see the man, how can I greet you welcome when you, without you have done for me, whatever, whatever? No. 
the peace of God must run in us. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Question. How many times can a member of the family forgive us or sin against us and we refuse to forgive? How many times? Anybody? This should be simple and straightforward. Anybody? How many times? There's no limit. What, can, can, can you back it up with the scripture before I read my own here? Matthew 18, 21, and 22. Someone to read for us quickly. See, I want to set up the stage such that by the time we finish this study, you will make up your mind. I will always love my child. I will always love my dad. I will always love my mom. No matter what they do, you will always explore opportunities to love. Matthew 18, 21, and 22. I want to first read that, please. 18, 21, and 22. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sisters? Who sins against me up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy seven times. No, not seventy seven times. Seventy seven times. That's what seventy. You are reading a different version of the Bible. You see, we are very sensitive. We are deeper line. We know the way the Bible sounds. God bless you. The essence of that is to erase the need for unforgiveness. No matter what that person has did, you settle it in your mind that you will forgive. At no matter the pain, you had the man, had a wife in Africa. That's fine. He st- I'm going to see my mother. But the mother has set up another wife for him at home to stay with her. Why, why, she, why is gone? You, you go, no, you, see, you, you, you pretend as if it didn't happen. It's hard, but that's the Bible. You want to go to heaven, like my mother, don't you say? To her, rapture is the number one thing. Everything else, I can, I can deal with them. That one is, 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 is not negotiable. You want to make the rapture? That is the word of God. Unforgiveness is totally, totally, completely un, unacceptable. But how do we conduct ourselves such that we forgive on the go? Some people say, I can forgive I will not forget. Let me share with you. I've been hurt many times. You don't forget. You are the one punishing yourself. I lost with the destiny for my brother. When I was going to school, I was in high school. But I was always gone, boarding house, for years. It was my brother. I went to college. I was always gone. 600 miles is 24 hour journey from Lagos to Nsuga. 12 hours. When I'm gone, I'm gone. I will see very briefly until I finished my degree and I had to come back home for graduate school. That was when we stayed together. He didn't know me until now. We are both grown up. He would tell me, I used to look at you like this. He didn't know my components. We are living in the same room. He was doing things I wouldn't have done at his age. And I was getting upset. I was getting upset. It got to a stage I had to tell him, maybe he needs to go and ask my mom whether we were born by the same father. It was that bad. Until I was going through stuff, years later, he wrote me a letter with his own hands. I wish I could I tell that he's sorry for whatever he has done. Maybe he's got him mature a little more. To him, we're just living life. To me, I was, just, I was getting hurt. Forgiveness is something that can destroy you. Unforgiveness. Help yourself. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Preeminence, point number two. Preeminence of love in the family. A family that has no love is not a family. Love is absolutely preeminent, overrides everything else. When you go to marry, I take you this man to love, to cherish, in sickness, for richer, for poorer, in sickness, in health, till death does part. Right? It's now, no, for a richer to stay, for poorer to go. That's the war. Unfortunately, it's beginning to creep into the church. They are telling us today, demographers tell us, 50% of marriages in the world, the first marriages end in a divorce. The same number in the church at large, not in this church. 85% of second marriages end in a divorce. That is demographic statistics. Third marriages is hopeless. Jane Fonda has been married only God knows how many times now. 
Your best bet is your first one. Statistically speaking, hold on to that first one. Because the second one has no hope. I can think of so many of my colleagues, my friends. One said, she's been through so many months. I felt sorry for her. You marry this one today, it's gone tomorrow, it's gone two years. The grace of God will be in us to make love preeminent in Jesus' name. Question, what are the attributes of love? When we say love should be preeminent in the family, what are the attributes of that love? I want some of the some of my, uh, senior citizens, over 50 can please help us. Baba Mara, what are the attributes of love? Don't quote the Bible. Just tell us what you have seen. I see your wife there. That means you are still married to her. God bless you. So what are the attributes of the love between you and her? And when it comes to prayer meetings, we tell her, pray for my wife. I, I've had that so many times. Pray for my wife. Pray for my wife. Pray. That shows love. What are the attributes of that love? One of the attributes of love is submission. As a man, you have to submit to your wife. Don't be afraid, you know, to clean up the kitchen. Don't be afraid to wash her pants. Amen! Don't be afraid to clean, you know, the house when she's not around. I think these are some of the ways we have to Maintain love in the family. Pastor Seth. You know, I call Pastor Seth because she's my friend. <laughs> see, I call her, when I, see the, when I see my church, I say, why is your daughter? The wife is the daughter. <laughs> and the wife told me, when they went home, when they see her, they say, why is your daddy? The husband is the daddy. What are the practical attributes of love? Uh, it's to be forbearing. Forbearing. Uh, irritation you have to bear with one another. Can, can I t- tell you just something about you? <laughs> Pastor Seth's wife is very clean. She is a neat freak. Our Pastor, Pastor Seth writes the check for the water. So when it's time to write the check, you see the water, this is my wife will rush, she will wash, 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 waste water, waste water. <laughs> Say, well, the wa- this is for bearing. This woman likes to clean. Let me pay for water for her to clean. Somebody say amen. amen. It takes understanding. Oh, yeah. Our wives are good. They love us. They care for us. But we are too African. I told you my own secret now. I don't know when I made the bed when my wife is around. I, it's not in me. Well, now, I don't have to make the bed. I can make the bed so good like those who tell Stretch it nice. Stretch out the corners. Make it look flat and clean. Because I have to. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, we have had, I, I, mean, I don't want to talk too much Bible. We have had this love is gentle, love is kind, love is this. But our women still complain. I mean, pastor, I hear stuff. They just deal with us. They just, one said, if you are not careful, I will leave, I will leave him. I've had it from two women in, the, in our church. Say, I, I, I will just leave him. For he to get to that level, that woman has had it up. To, and the man is gentle. He has no girlfriend. The things who went in the world age is, they don't, I know this man, they don't have a girlfriend. But the boss is still little, little issues. Love in the family. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. We need to focus on it. I'm not your love is gentle. We know that. Let's get that at the back of you. are gentle, then you'll be forbearing. You will understand. You, you always maybe have a reason why she did what she did. Something I was thinking that many of us, we like to work hard, work hard, work hard, work hard. But are those things the things that are desired by our partners or by our children? When I was a little boy, all I wanted is for food. My mother cooks food. I love my mother. Food three times a day. I will love you for uh, whatever else. Let me play. My father just give me money to pay my fees. That's all. Kids nowadays, they expect a lot more. You're not coming for my, to, for my results. You're not coming for my game. You're not coming for this. And we don't find out. And that children, will, you give her instructions. My f- first son, I will not forget. Pull the trash. Some, before I get home, I want the trash pulled. He will not pull the trash. He's watching for, I will whip the head out of him. He will not pull the trash. 
He was trying to get my attention. Dad, I need you. Take me to the game. Take me to this. Take me to that. You are always gone. I, it's, 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 it, 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 uh, it's not resisting. It's, uh, I'm trying to find the right way. Say, look, I get, uh, sorry, listen to me too. Our children have needs. Let's take time to explore them. So that we'll flow together. Many of you see my two youngest children are about to apologize to their brother several times. I'm sorry. I was trying to raise you the way my father raised me. This is America. Those ones are different. I can talk to them. They can talk to me because we have understanding. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Perception, they say, is reality. Perceptions, you say you love, but what I see doesn't show you love. What I see is my is my reality. But how do we make what our partners, what our children perceive as a reality, as a good reality that we can now change or correct as God is leading us? Let's turn our Bible to John. We see Jesus Christ giving us an example there. John 21. The gospel according to John 21, we see Jesus Christ trying to clarify. Many a times we don't clarify. So we now begin to make wrong assumptions. Those wrong assumptions become a perception, and the perceptions become a reality. John 21, verse 15. I will read for us. Yeah, that's it. So when they are down, Jesus said unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me more than this? And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. What are you talking about? You know I love you. But as far as Jesus is concerned, his perception was, Lovest thou you love me more than this? He said, I love thee. What? But let's go ahead. And he said, Thou knowest that I love thee. And he said unto him, Feed my lambs. You see, as far as Jesus was concerned then, all that Peter was doing, they were not love to him. If you love me, this is how you show it. Let's look at another scriptures in the same John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. One lesson we bring out there. Jesus tried to clarify what you need to do to show that you love me. And we also should do this among ourselves. We have given so many practical things. What is your perception of your children? What is your perception of your wife or of your husband? Men, many times men really complete their lives, wives loving them. Because the language of men is different. I really hear a man say, my wife doesn't love me. It's always women that say the husband doesn't love them. Because men, they are, my small role clarified this. He said, the perception of love for men is respect. As long as you respect a man, you love him. And how do you respect a man? In those things we have said, love is gentle, love is kind, it's not puffed up. I see some women, the way they do, in, the way they, in this church, the way they look at their men in the public, you know something's wrong. Maybe the man just say, hey, stop. <laughs> they give the man one look. We are, I've told you so many times. When you sneeze, you put your hands in your mouth. <laughs> are, are we resonated? <laughs> but the way you look at the man, you see the way I breathe in and out? If, I, if not for Jesus Christ, if not for sanctification, I will have smack, smashed the hair out of your eyes today. <laughs> respect the man. How do you respect the man? Even if there's no food. Maybe if my wife had called me that day, I said, sorry, I'm so tired. When you come home, you maybe you want to drink gari and granite. But I'm so tired right now. I couldn't cook. I thought I could get to it, but I couldn't get to it. You know what? I've sent the kids to go and get you something from McDonald's. So when you get home, you have something to eat. But why to you just pick up the phone? And get, if, if you know you're going to eat, better stop by McDonald's. That's disrespect. 
You respect a man, you got him 80%. I will share a secret with you. I'm a man, I've been married for a couple of decades. You respect the man, you got him down. That's love to the man. Let's talk about Ephesians 5 and 22. I didn't want, we know these things, but it's good we emphasize it with the Bible. What well, they tell us in deeper life, everything we say should be backed up by the Bible. Ephesians 5, 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. Will you disrespect your pastor? I got a video on the internet. One of my friends sent to me. Say, these women who are kneeling down for their pastors, they don't kneel down for their husbands at home. I'm not asking a woman to kneel down for me. It's just, it's just old. I mean. But he's saying they respect their pastors so much, but they will not respect their husbands at home. And I share with a friend who had a marriage ministry, you need to share this with the women that listen to you, not about women. I say, people, one day somebody kneeled down for me in this church. Two knees. I say, that's something you do for people and they are 60s, or, I'm not 60 yet, or 70s, old people. But that was the level of that person's respect for me. I didn't know. One person also somewhere went to convention. The wife of a pastor knelt down for me with two knees on the floor. Pastor come. This is what your wife did to me. The man said, because I was just surprised. said, that is what she does for me too. You tell me, that woman, what does she want in this world? <laughs> a woman answered me. <laughs> Whatever she wants in this world. I'm not saying you kneel down. Respect your man. When he sneezes, give him a man catch it right away. No, you don't like what he did? Well, don't give him that kind of look. Or when you get home, that's public. I, I see it. Find ways and means of respecting him. You, you achieve a lot. And to the woman, let's turn the Bible to verse 1. I know you're going, to love, you're going to love this so that you don't think I'm talking to women alone. Husbands, love your wives. As, as even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Verse 28. So men ought to love lives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife, loveth himself. My late mother was dying. Yeah, I will not forget. It was, she was crying about my dad. Your dad is lean. Your dad is not eating. Get a driver for your dad. And my dad doesn't want a driver. You see, people will think he has money. He doesn't want to get killed. See, I said, shut up, you're sick, let's take care of you first. She was crying about the husband. Can you show that kind of love? How will we have that in the church, in our homes? That we, know, we see there's no love. No, we love, Baba said, so, so me, it's not hard for us to submit to your wife, it's not hard. Just clean the dishes, just, just wash her underwear, you know, wash your woman's underwear, come in. you know what I mean? Well, you wash the underwear. Maybe I will try it when next time I'll be chance. Do things. Cook the food. Now I can cook very well. Before she comes, get the food ready. Don't worry, you have to cook. I got everything set. What? You cook this for me? Yes, I cook for you. Exact. One time I bought flowers for my wife. Expensive flowers in the box. FedEx, FedEx it to her. She didn't open the box for days. <laughs> I said, have you opened the box? I've not opened it. Who cares about your box? Perception is reality. How do, we, how do we get somebody to take time to ask, how can I show that I love you? Ask your wife that. Ask your husband that. Because I know all these men in this church, they love their wives. I know that. But the woman has still complained. He doesn't care. Maybe you are working hard. Working plenty over time. You want to buy your wife that Mercedes. She doesn't care about no Mercedes. She wants you home. Maybe she can live with the current car. If you do what she wants. Understand your wife. Be not bitter against them. You're not helping yourself. 
He have it against your wife. Always look for means and means. Settle this. There's no room for unforgiveness. So when you've said that in your mind, it's easier for you to overlook many other things. Then we see the law. And it doesn't hurt. Take your wife. Some women don't care. But some women care. Maybe they, my friends, on their birthday, their husband took them out. They went to lunch. They went to dinner. This and that. You don't do that for me? Is that all? That's not hard. We can do that. Maybe your wife cares about that. Perception is reality. Always validate your perception. Maybe the husband is working hard. Like I said, working plenty over time. I want us to do, I don't care about that. I care about the little things. That will promote understanding. When there's understanding, there will be love. Then when love will be reciprocated, then they will, it's like, you're, I, I don't know how to describe it. The love that you had, when you were younger, you bring it back again. I remember when I was younger, I used to live close to the airport. I used to travel a lot. I had only one child then. My wife would sit at the corridor, counting the planes, because there was no phone where I was, to see if I would be in that plane coming. So she would, they said that, they, they, they were, when I come home sometimes, they were just waiting for me, thinking maybe I would be in that plane coming. And I would show up at the house, because they were expecting. And I challenged myself, what can I do to bring that back? Think for yourself. When you started out, how were you? We need that to come back. We need our children to see that in us. To see that thing that my father loves my mother. My mother loves my dad. I will not mention names. There's somebody in this church. You see, my, mom, my mommy loves my daddy too much. I want to hear that from many of us. When your child can say, your, our mommy loves our daddy too much. Because she can see it. When it's time for her to marry. But she says to me, I don't know if I can love my husband like the way my mother loves my dad. My, my. But the mother has set a standard. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So the children will tend to forget. And it gives me a lot of pain. As a parent, I told you I've apologized to one of my son many, many times. I asked Samuel, how many times have I apologized to you? He said, a lot. I love him. But I loved him the way my dad loved me. My dad wanted me to be the best in everything I did. If I cut school, there would be a problem. I don't do right, I'll be spanking. I was trying to straighten him up. But when I was with his brothers, while we were in Pittsburgh, it was different. Seven days a week, we had to go somewhere together. We would go to Bible study, we go to church, we go to a game, we go to visit somebody, we go for practice. We would travel out of town to Youngstown, Ohio, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in hundred and something miles, just for them to go play a tournament and I bring them back home. My youngest son will ride, will say, no, I'm not going to ride the bus. You will drop me at school. So I had to put him into my schedule. Sorry, boss, I cannot come early because I will drop off my son at school. That, that has created a lot of bond between us today. What does your child need? To show that you love him. Some children may not care. Maybe it's the girl. Let's turn our Bibles to Colossians 3. I'm trying to make this a little bit practical and illustrative. But I saw that all those, we love each other. But we need to show in many ways that we love each other. Colossians 3 verse 21. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. I think about my son, Kate Samuel. Pull the trash. Simple instruction. I will whip the hell out of him. He will not pull that trash. He was resentful. That's what I was looking for. What do you do for me? Why should I pull the trash? It's not hard. Take the trash from the house. Put it in the, in the bigger trash outside. Take five minutes. But he will not. He was trying to communicate to me. I didn't get it. But he could not speak because I was not available. His brothers would call me, hey, dad, you need... my son, he called me, daddy, I want to join the basketball team. I'm a, you know, uh, uh, is, this, is this the price? I know what he loved. He loved to play basketball and I have to pay for it. Then when it's time to go to Bible study, they don't argue with me. 
It's Bible study time. They carry their Bible. You would want to do what daddy wants. You do what daddy wants to. We're going to church. We're going to church. I hear your clothes on, on Saturday night. They don't have to do that. It goes both ways. Don't provoke them. They will be resentful. They will be resisting you. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Point number three, persistent and continuity of love in the family. The practical, genuine love that our children can even see it. Love is not supposed to stop. There was a time my wife told me, I'm your mother. I told her to her face, you are not my mother. That was the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes of my life. What? Because women, they want to manage you like their son. <laughs> like their child. Your shoe is too big. Your jacket is too big. You are not eating well. They will correct everything about you. Even when they are overweight, they will see your stomach is coming out too much. <laughs> if you can submit to your wife, like Baba said, okay, uh, my stomach is too much, okay, I will stop eating the bar, whatever. Just do what they want. Love will continue in Jesus' name. In Proverbs 18, verse 19, we say offenses, in fact, we have to look at it to illustrate many of the things we have been talking about. Because many at times, it's of little to offense that, that leads to bigger problems. And when the bigger problems are there, it, 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 being, it breeds resentment. And when the resentment comes in, you see the woman, or, or even the man, being something we didn't, we didn't expect. Proverbs 18, verse 19. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And their contentions are like the bars in a castle. What are they saying is that do you do your, uh, do your best not to offend anybody in the house? Your child, your spouse, all of us. Because to, 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 to win that person back, it creates a lot of oh, I doubt and distrust you. Not to talk about when adultery is coming in, you know, what kind of things is coming in. I mean, you cannot leave your phone there. <laughs> I leave my phone anywhere you look. It's really okay, whatever, whatever. You have to be hiding in the corner to look at the phone or whatever. When that is coming in, yes, something is going wrong. You cannot stand there. Hello, hello, yes, who are you? Anytime. I tell you, as a, past, as a matter of personal policy, I don't call women after 9 o'clock. Anybody. If I not, it's too late. Maybe it's 7 o'clock. Unless you're a church person. Sister, I'm okay, you're going to sing this for the church tomorrow. I can call you at nine. When it's not, you got text. Anybody like that. You create a barrier for the devil. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And how do we make this love to perpetuate in us? Uh, I, I don't have too many times. Uh, you see, Paul told us Acts in 4 16. Here yeah, I didn't do I exercise myself to have a conscious void of offense. Not even in action, a conscious inside the heart. You're always thinking, what would my wife think about this? What would my husband think about this? Before you even do it, void of offense in your heart before all men. So when that thought is there, you are, you are creating the, 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 a better environment for love. Love to flourish. First Peter 4, verse 8, it tells us, Charity shall cover a multitude of sins. That is what will make, even when the man does wrong, even when the man goes into adultery, you say, no, this man wasn't like that. What, what are we going to do to fix him? He's it's, it's becoming a candidate for hell. How can I help him out? Not, oh, you, I don't know. When, 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 when you do that to a woman, oh, man, it's your head is going to rise. The Lord will give us grace in Jesus' name. There was a song I wanted us to sing this morning. And I don't know if any, I don't know it very well. It said, let there be love found among us. Do we know it very well? Who knows it very well? If you know it, raise up your hand. So the rest of us can sing along with you. Oh, Pastor Bina is not here to play the keyboard. Say, let, Sister Adelie, you raise your hand. You know it very well? Very, very well. You, I did, uh, yes or no? Yes. Give her the microphone, please. Somebody. Let me stand.
Let there be the love. Wait, 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 wait. Before we say, do we really understand, get the message to this morning by the grace of God? The pastor gave me a topic, practical love and forgiveness in the family. All this talk, we want love. I will never forget Mommy Martin's daughter. I want her to be my standard. That my mommy, I want my child to say that my daddy loves my mom too much. When we make that a standard by the grace of God, we're always thinking about our spouse. We're not selfish. Oh, I'm too late. I've got to go back home. My wife is waiting for me. You're always thinking about your, your wife. You're always thinking about your husband. Then, the world will see you. People cannot mess with you. Because there's always something about, mem- oh, my son has a game. Oh, my son has a recital. It's always about someone in the house. And when offenses come, we look for ways and means of resolving them. Go to that person. Perceiving love. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. What so, lessons have I learned today that will make me a better candidate? The Bible says, As she all that men do unto you, so do you unto them. The way you want your husband to love you, love him like that. The way you want your, life, your wife to love you, you love him like that first. You take the first step, you know what? And say, God, I will do my own part. I will play my own part. I will reach out. I will do things that are not convenient for me. I will do things that, that are kind of hard for a man to do. If that's what my wife wants, and it's not sinful, it's not illegal, it's not illegitimate, give me the grace to do it, Lord. And when I shine that light Lord my wife will get the message my husband will get the message my children will get the message and they will see the love of God in our in our family and when the love of God is there in our family we radiate the same love to the church and when the church is loving like that we fulfill the love of Christ and you help us in Jesus name in Jesus name we pray our father we want to thank you so much for this morning you have taught us we want it to be evident. Say, so let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. We want your light to shine in us. And our children will see it. Our neighbors will see it. Our friends will see it. Everybody will see it that we love one another. And your glory will be seen in our church. Your name will be praised indeed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.